There we go. Okay. Hang on a minute. Oh, I think it works out here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so welcome to Homeschooling 101 by Alberta Homeschooling Association. Now, if you want to know lots more than what I'm going to present tonight, um, we have this webinar in print form with the um, Homeschooling Handbook. It's 120 pages of really, really great information. Um, so I am, I have homeschooled my kids about 24 years. These are all them. They all have graduated high school. They have all been accepted into university. Um, we've been to four nations. I'm just going to interrupt for you for a minute because you're not sharing your screen right now. We can't see it. Good heavens. <laughs> I just thought I would mention that because I know that you have, I know what that screen is. <laughs> Oh my goodness, why? <laughs> All right, here we go again. Zoom is just not working for me tonight. There, everybody, can you see my screen? <laughs> okay. All right, let's go slideshow. There we go. Okay. We've been to four convocations so far, which is really, really good. So um and we want to assume tonight I'm gonna assume that you want to keep all doors open for your child. So definitely um, if where your kids want to go, whether they want to be an entrepreneur or they want to work or they want to go on to university, it's absolutely possible to get a government high school diploma and go on to post-secondary when you're home educating for sure. Okay. Um, now we love teachers. Teachers are fantastic. Um, sometimes many of us pull our kids out of the system because it needs improvement. Um, but enough said about that. <laughs> I just want to be ensure you that every child that breathes learns. Um, this handy little video kind of shows you that. This is a video of um, brain neurons um, connecting with each other. And um, if I push it there, you can see how when we talk about brains are wiring, they're connecting. This is what learning is. And this happens whether a child is doing a workbook or playing a video game. They are learning because it's biologically happening. One neuron is connecting with another neuron across this big gap, which is called a synapse. So this is gonna happen no matter who teaches your child or where they learn anything. So education is no longer categorized as where it takes place. We learned that from COVID. It is who is responsible and who makes all the decisions. So anything I present tonight in green is home education, or some people call it community education. That is parent directed. So if you use the analogy of a car, the parent is in the driver's seat. Anything that is taking place at home, but the school is responsible, is teacher directed. And that is the teacher in the driver's seat or the school or the government. Okay, so there's a big difference between responsibility and decision making. I'm, I'm just going to skip this for time. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. Why choose home education? Um, the the reasons people choose it are as numerous as their individual families. It could be um, things happening in the school. So it could be a, um, a push. So a push out of the school, bullying maybe happening, special needs not being met, um, could be busing is too long. Um, it could be some pull aspects. So um, parents may be very faith-based and want a more faith-based educational experience. Families may want to travel um, or just whatever. There's so many reasons why people do. So, um, okay, where do kids learn? 
Um, they learn in all kinds of places, not just in school. These are all the places that people actually learn from. So it's very interesting that our society tends to equate learning with school. But as I showed you in that neuron video, kids learn everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So in Alberta, currently there's two ways to get an education. There's school, which is government controlled. Now that is physical classes, online classes, correspondence, distributed learning, or what we call distance education, okay? That is um, the school, the teacher, the government is in the, um, the main driver's seat. And then there's home education, and that is the parent is in the driver's seat, okay? So, um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the history. Homeschooling in Alberta has been around since 1985, but it has really, really grown probably in the last 20 years for various reasons. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's delve into how it all works. So... In Alberta, we have this government plan called the Alberta Program of Studies, and we're outcome-based, which means that, for example, in grade one science, um, one of the outcomes is creating color. So every school in the province has to teach curriculum so that a student can match this outcome. And... It happens in public school, independent schools, or um, charter schools. They all teach the same outcomes as the Alberta programs of study, except for one part that's called home education. We can follow the Alberta curriculum, or we can follow our own 22 outcomes, which we call the solo outcomes, by the time our child is age 20. So it's very flexible, um, easy to do. Every child, if they breathe, they will meet some of those outcomes. So here's the four education choices I talked about. There's public and Catholic school, there's independent schools, there's charter schools. And then in this quadrant, this is home education, which runs very, very differently than the other three quadrants. So we can follow the 22 home education outcomes or the 1400 Alberta programs of study outcomes per grade. It's your choice. It even asks you that on the home ed notification form. Which one do you wanna pick? You wanna pick the 22 solo outcomes because even if you're going to meet the 1400 Alberta government outcomes per grade, it just gives you a lot more flexibility say you don't get it done, you you know want to skip some sections, things like that. It just gives you way more flexibility. Now, our deadline to start enrolling in home education with a supervising homeschool board this year, I think it's September 28th. It's usually the last day in September, used to be the 30th, but now that's a national holiday. So now it's the day before, okay? Now, as soon as you partly register your home education child in classroom or print-based or online, then you're sharing the responsibility with a school. So you would teach some subjects under home education. They would teach some subjects, um, you pick them, under their school, and they would be responsible for them. So you can see who's responsible for what in this nice little graph, okay? <clears throat> now, um, most of you are probably not pulling your kids out right now. It's kind of late in the year. It's late May. <laughs> you want to let them stay in for those June parties and end of year field trips and things like that. But you're probably here because you're trying to figure out things for the fall, okay? So you don't, you can let your child's school know that you're not going to re-enroll them in the fall or they will be notified if you sign up for a supervising homeschool board they will notify your child's school right now so it's up to you okay i'm not gonna talk about this at all nope okay 
So, um, like I said before, distance education is the school controls everything. Home education is you control everything. Now, we have a new choice as of 2020. We can go supported home education or we can go unsupported. And we got lots of parents asking, well, what should I do? Should I notify with the homeschooling board or should I just notify with the government and be left alone? And that is totally up to you. I Many parents like going with a homeschooling board because it's kind of an advocacy for you. It's a, it's a, a go-between between you and the government. So you would ask the board for support. You can call them up. You, they get assign you a facilitator. Um, you can run through curriculum with them. They're really, really nice, nice support system in addition to us, of course, um, but you also get funding, right? So you would get $901 per child per year in grades one to 12, or you could get $450 for your kindergarten child if you go supported home education. If you go unsupported, all you would do is fill out a notification for, form, send it to the government and be done until next year when you do the same thing. So each year in home education, you have to be, register your child somewhere. You, they either got to be unsupported or supported in home education. Unlike school where they just assume that you're going to bring your kid back until, you know, you change schools. Okay, so um, there are some programs called teacher-directed, paper-based, or blend it. Now, these are school programs. They are schools that teach your child in your home. The beauty of that is you don't have to do anything other than, you know, make sure your child gets the work done, right? It's it's the equivalent of having your child in a classroom, only they're doing a lot more homework. <laughs> so this is school. Um, same thing. They get report cards. They have to meet assignments and deadlines. Um, the teacher is a boss. So those are school, but in your living room, okay, just to be sure. Same with online. Online differs from teacher directed in that it, there are a little more classes through Zooms, through the um, school boards. Um, teacher directed and paper-based tend to be more correspondence. So you need a child that can read and write to do these. Online can be delivered online. And this was a lot of school boards develop these really, really well during COVID because they had to, okay? Um, home education is when you want to decide what you want to do. You don't have to give exams. You don't have to get marks. You don't have to hand in assignments to anyone. Um, but just be aware there's no such thing called one homeschooling curriculum that anybody sends out to you. You have to find your curriculum decide what you want to do, get your resources, and you um, deliver it to your child or find someone who does deliver it to your child. Okay, so we often get that question like, where do I sign up for the homeschooling program? And when are you going to send me the curriculum? <laughs> we don't send out curriculum. Um, you have to purchase it and your supervising school board will reimburse you. Okay, and then shared responsibility is just a little bit of both. The school takes some subjects, you take some subjects. So that's pretty easy to follow. Okay, now, no matter what program you choose, you know, um, if you switch to following Alberta education outcomes by grade 10 for your child, they start meeting those course outcomes in high school, they will get a government Alberta education diploma. And it will not say on the diploma or the transcript that your child was home educated, nowhere. So be assured that your child can get a diploma and graduate. Okay, um, there's a lot of philosophies on home education. There's not one right way to do anything. And I think that's what is overwhelming to parents just says, you know, when they bring that newborn home and they start, um, you know, um, raising a little baby, there are so many different parenting styles and there's no one best one. What there is, is a best fit for that child and for you and your family. 
And maybe it, it's going to take a year to find out best how your child learns. We have found through experiences that most children up to age 12 learn best through activities. Um, the more hands-on, the more they use all their senses in an activity, the more they learn. So for example, if you give a seven-year-old um, a book about animals versus taking that seven-year-old to the zoo, which one do you think they're going to learn better from? The zoo, right? Now, in school, teachers have to use a lot of text resources by grade four. So grade ones to grade three is teaching kids to read. Grades four to onward is teaching kids through reading. So they read. So it's very text-based because teachers are handling up to 30, 40 kids per classroom. And that's the most efficient way to teach kids is through books, workbooks and textbooks. But you don't have to do that at home. You have one child, or if you're like me, I had five children. We still did a lot more experiential learning. We taught the kids through fun things like games, through toys, through projects, through um, videos, field trips, all those wonderful things. So homeschooling is not taking the school model and bringing it home. It's totally unique. You can do what your child or how they learn best. Absolutely. Um, I'm just gonna pause for a minute and um, I don't wanna run out of power here. I don't have my power cord. Okay, <laughs> um, just one minute, please. Um, I'm gonna just pause the recording. If you, hey, Golda, if anybody yeah. has any questions, can you um, answer any yeah. questions at this moment? I'm just gonna run down and get my power cord. There hasn't been any questions, but if anybody does have any, I can answer them now. Hey, buy those. You can, sorry, Judy, I answered all those questions without <laughs> without the recording. Um, uh, you can actually buy them from those teacher stores, like, edu uh, what's the one in Edmonton called? There's like Scholar's Choice and, yeah, and, yeah there's, you can buy certificates and just fill one out yourself too. Yeah. Some boards actually do give certificates. I know my kids did. And it's yeah. said that they completed a grade in home education. But I mean, many home educators don't don't focus on grades. No. <laughs> After a while, you just you know where oh. your child's at. I a lot of a lot of homeschooling parents forget what grade their kid is in, actually. <laughs> and yeah. So um and also uh, I, I know that some school boards now. Uh, the one that I'm registered at are is offering like a high school certificate of completion. So it's not a government diploma, but it's like a piece of paper saying you finished 12 years of school. So that's useful for job applications. Nice. I'll let you take over if you want, Judy. It's like the, the question we're at is the diploma necessary to be accepted to college or university. I, I heard it's not required everywhere. Yeah. Hey, you're doing great. <laughs> thank you <laughs> well thank you you're yeah, doing great thank you I talked really fast so I hope it wasn't too fast for everyone <laughs> no you answered great and I was thinking oh man I should have recorded this <laughs> oh yeah so well <laughs> too late like, next time um one of the questions is a diploma necessary to be accepted to college or university um, most of the main universities across Canada do not require a high school diploma. Most um, post-secondaries only require certain courses in grade 11 or 12 for their programs. But having said that, you know, it's your responsibility if you have a child near high school age to, to help them get the qualifications they need to to apply to those programs, but. Uh, and can I just mention that Judy is actually an expert in this and wrote a book called Unschooling to University. Just so you know, Judy is the one that wrote the book on this. So she knows what she's talking about. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe we are going to mention it. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so can you switch between supported and unsupported year by year? Absolutely. So every year is a new year and you're kind of stuck with the year 
except that if you're if you sign up with a homeschooling board and it's not working very well, I think you could actually just notify with the government and quit the board and not get funding through the year. Do you know if they can do that, Golda? That I think yeah, they, they can do that. It's just like any other school. You can you can opt out any anytime if it's not going well. Yeah. And so, yeah, and you know what? You can even you can even swap school and homeschooling year by year too. You could <laughs> you could put your child in school in the fall and they go to school this year and then you can homeschool next year and then you can put your child back in school the next year. Um, the only caveat to that is if your child's in a special program like French immersion or you know, a really high competitive program, you might not get them back into that program. Um, so just be aware of that. If you hold them out to homeschool them through the summer, um, they will always, always have a place back in their local public school, but they may not get into the special program if they were in it before. Yeah. Okay. Um, for supported, you mentioned we pay for a curriculum and then get reimbursed from the board. Exactly. So you pay up front for lessons, curriculum, toys, science kits, and then you submit receipts um, after October 1st to your board. And then they pay out half of it in the fall, half of it in the spring. So you you have to. Um, and some and some boards uh, pay throughout the year. It depends on the board. There's a whole bunch of different methods that they use. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next, the next question actually was like a continuation of that certificate question, and so I can answer that. Oh yeah. That they might not issue a, a certificate for a grade, but they will issue you a report for a grade. So you'll get a a written report from the facilitator and from the school, um, saying that, and it should say at some point that your child goes on to the next grade. So you might not get a certificate, which wouldn't necessarily be recognized anyway at a, another school in another province or country, but you will get a report saying what your child did that year. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, my child was going to a private school in junior kindergarten, a class added before kindergarten. They follow the IB program. Can I homeschool, but stay with same board? Um, there is no IB program in home education, and there is no advanced placement in home education high school. So you could stay with the same board. You would have to go to the principal, though, and ask them if they would supervise your home education program. A lot of schools have no idea what that is, but they might. So that's one thing you could do, but probably you would have to move to a a homeschooling board specifically. Okay, that teacher's store in Edmonton was Education Station. Um, if wanting to switch back to a regular school at some point, is it easy to make the switch or do most schools want some form of proof of achievement or level of education? Okay, so until grade 10, absolutely not. You can um, put your child back in school and the school will accept them into whatever grade matches their age. So if your child is 13, they'll go into grade seven. If your child is 15, they'll go into probably grade nine. If they go into grade 10, a lot of high schools do want to give your kids um, tests just to figure out which course to place them in for grade 10, okay? But um, generally, no, they just go in as per their age. Um, the website, again, where you can find the different boards is called albertahomeschooling.ca. Okay, I've heard about homeschoolers advancing through grades quickly. Can certain grades be skipped and challenged? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you are in the driver's seat. So if your child is advanced in math, let's say you have a grade three and she's working at a grade five level in math, keep going in grade five for her. Keep going. If, um, but maybe she's not advanced in English language arts and needs more support there. 
maybe she's a grade behind. So you can add more um, help for her, more support. It's so flexible. And I think that's why so many parents choose home education because you can customize for your child whatever they need. They can work ahead in certain subjects. They can, you know, get more more support and more help in certain subjects. It is totally flexible that way. And you make the decisions fantastic that way. So I, I should mention though that it, you have to apply for the to the principal if you want to actually skip grades in the student information system. And they're usually fairly reluctant to do that. So you can administer whatever grade material you want, but to actually skip a grade, you have to apply. Yeah. I didn't even ever tell my kids what grade they were in. Um, yeah. People would ask my daughter, oh, what grade are you in? And she'd say, I'm level 80 hunter, which is her level in World of Warcraft. She had no idea. She was, she was actually in grade eight. <laughs> so yeah, we we in home ed, you don't think in grades, but you, a lot of people do. That's okay. You know, they go grade by grade, but um, your child is funded all the way up to age 20. So you still have, you have like five years to do high school too. Um, another question, we can move in another country and still get funding and stay connected with Alberta. Now go to help me out. I think your child needs to be in Alberta on September 28th, right? To get Yeah, funding. I was just writing that actually. <laughs> okay. You have to be considered a resident and your child has to be in the province September on September 28th to be considered a resident in order to, uh, 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 now that being said, I don't know who checks. I don't know who checks. I don't think anybody does, but um, technically you're supposed to be in the province September 28th in order to get homeschool funding. But yes, you can move around as long as you're still a resident of Alberta. Yeah. Okay. And are here September 27th, but nobody checks. Yeah. <laughs> Angie, this is a great question. I, you know, these are questions I don't even think about, but um, great questions. So when the facilitator gives a report for the year, how do they know what work has been done? Are things submitted to the facilitator or is it based on the education plan? So it's totally based on your education plan. So, so you, that's why you want to pick the 22 solo outcomes because they're very, 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 very vague. I'll bring them up in a minute. And um, if you don't get to anything um, that year, you you have until your child is 20 to cover all 22 outcomes. So <laughs> there's no problem if you don't get to anything. Whereas if you follow the Alberta programs of study, it's, it's probably still not a problem if you don't get to things. I'm sure schools and teachers don't cover everything either in schools. Um, but it is a bit more complicated if you choose to follow the government curriculum. So you you can follow the government curriculum, but just put on your form that you're not going to. <laughs> you do not submit any work to the facilitators. They don't want to see it. They're not going to mark it. Um, they, all they want to see at your facilitator visit is have a chit chat with your child. They make some notes on you know, what your child's been up to that year. Um, say your child made this fantastic model of the city with Lego. They're going to write that in the report that that follows um, outcomes for math and science and creativity and art. So I'll, I'll show you what a, what a year-end report looks like. Okay. So I think I'm going to just um, pause it there on questions and just cover a few more things and then we'll we'll finish up with questions. Okay. So there's okay. different ways to show your facilitator too. Some people start Instagram Instagram uh, things just to share with their facilitator and their family, their homeschooling journey. There's mm -hmm. lots of ways to share it. That's how they know the facilitators. They know by what you tell them. Yeah, and, and some people do a blog, you know, and then um, they share that with relatives too. Yeah, yeah they have relatives. Facebook, yes. Facebook pages just for that, just for homeschooling. And then they only share it with a very small group of people. Right, yeah, very, yeah. very different. Yeah. Okay, so just to recap, if you're going supported or unsupported under home education, supported, you notify with a school board, you don't apply. It's not an application. 
Um, however, they can say no. <laughs> they have 15 days to let you know if they're going to take your child or not. So you absolutely want to get that in before September 1st, I would say. Unsupported, you notify with the government. Okay. And that information is on our website. Um, government, don't wait for acceptance. You do not need acceptance. They just take the file, notify your school, and that's it. You're done for the year. You don't get funding. You don't get visits. You don't have to do a home ed plan. You don't get support. And your child doesn't get credits for high school. And you have to do that every year. If you're going to the board, you um, wait for acceptance. Um, the funding is $901. You will have two visits a year from your assigned facilitator. So one in the fall, one in the spring, usually around this time. Um, you have to do a written home ed plan and you get lots of support and encouragement, which is number one reason you want to go with the board other than funding. And your child, if they're in high school, they will get credits through um, having a portfolio review. So this is the notification form if you're going with a board. So you want, it'll say home education regulation 2019 notification form. And um, yeah, okay. And, uh, and this is the part where I say you have to decide if you're going to go with the 22 outcome or 22 outcomes of the home education, or you're gonna go with the 1400 Alberta programs of study outcomes. Pick this one, the solo, even if you're going to do the other one. It just makes it easier. Another thing parents read is, it says here, parents who provide home education programs acknowledge their implications when they choose to use programs different from the government curriculum. Their students may not apply for credits and they may not receive a diploma. So that's when I said around grade 10, if they do want a diploma in high school, they have to switch to meeting Alberta programs of study outcomes. They have to do this to get a diploma, okay? You don't have to do this from grades one to nine, but you do from grades 10 to 12. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, okay, let's see. Here are some of the boards. Um, now, you don't have to go with your local school board. You can go with any homeschooling board in the province. So if you live in high level, you can go with um, by design down in, you know, Southern Calgary. You do not have to go local. A lot of the boards travel and they put on um, special days in different cities so that parents can get out and meet each other. Kids can get together for activities. Um, the, the boards travel to you. Um, a lot of the facilitator visits are done over Zoom, um, so you don't have to worry about traveling there. So there's advantages to both. Um, there's large school boards, the big ones, or there's a smaller independent schools. And 80% of the home educators in this province are with the smaller independent schools. Why? Um, probably because um, they tend to have facilitators who have done this before, right? They have homeschooled their own kids. They um, know exactly what you're talking about when you run into walls. They're very, very, very supportive. Large school boards tend to hire teachers, like all the facilitators have to be facilitated teachers. Um, and they can be not always um, the teachers have kids even, or have home educated. In teacher training, there is no mandatory courses on home education. So a lot of teachers um, don't understand it, don't know um, much about it, actually. <laughs> so it's up to you. I mean, there's advantages to both. Um, a lot of, if you go with a large school board, there's less pickiness in receipts and funding because they have economies of scale. The smaller schools tend to be a bit more pickier on what they'll accept to fund um, because they have had experience where Alberta Ed has rejected their claims and then they're out of pocket the money. They won't go after you to get the money back, but they're out of it. So there's lots of different um, reasons. This is your home education plan. So you will fill this out when you notify with a supportive homeschooling board. 
If you're going with the government, you don't have to do this, okay? So these are the 22 outcomes. Like I said, they're very vague. So for English, um, it's read for information, understanding, and enjoyment. Write and speak clearly, accurately, and appropriately for the contacts. That's it. So you list your activities here. So let's say you're going to read three books to your child every night before bedtime. You put that in there. And then how will you know that they're learning? You can put here, have discussions with child. That tells you that they've learned something from that activity. Okay, so it can be very, very, very simple. We have sample templates of all these grades at the Alberta Education website and in our big Facebook group. So you can um, kind of follow what that looks like. Um, math, here's the one outcome for math. Use mathematics to solve problems in business, science, and daily life situations. So, <laughs> so for grade three, they don't have to be mastering multiplication. They don't have to meet certain outcomes. They just have to use math in daily life. This is what I mean by it's very vague. Every child is going to meet these by the age 20. Okay. Anything you want to claim for resources, reimbursement funding, you have to put on this plan. And this plan is work in progress. Once you file it with a school authority in the summer for your registration for the fall, you can change it at any time you want. You, you can say by Christmas, you want to buy this nice new Star Wars Lego set and you're gonna claim it under mathematics or under technology. Then you put it in there, you put Lego, Star Wars, Lego set, um, and you file that with your facilitator and hopefully, you know, you can go buy it and they'll they'll refund you. So this is what it looks like. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was, okay. Yeah, your facilitator is a certified teacher, could be a homeschooling parent, but they're your partner. They're your support partner in education. They're not there to, um, you know, um, to judge you. They're, they're so nice. And if they're not nice, and if you don't leave your facilitator visit feeling uplifted and good, then maybe it's not a good fit with your facilitator. And you can definitely change. You can go to the principal and say, oh, we're not a good fit. Can you, can you send me someone who believes in unschooling <laughs> or whatever? Right. So you have that. The fall visit, you tend to go over the home education plan. Um, you can ask your facilitator um, what kind of curriculum um, you want to purchase. A lot of people have it in place by then, but some people don't. And it's just getting set up for the year. Your spring visit, there are no exams, no provincial achievement tests, no marks, no report cards, no parent teacher interviews. Um, so you sit down with your facilitator and, and your child. And like, like Golda said, I mean, you can show them an Instagram account or photos, certificates of any classes they did, writing samples, maybe their letter to Santa projects. And it's, it's a really fun social visit. And then the facilitator fills out a report on what you've told her. It's all anecdotal, right? So, um, let me, do I have a picture of that one? Yeah, I'm, uh, that's probably coming up. I don't know. Okay, what about curriculum? Start with the library and the internet. There's so much curriculum out there. It is overwhelming, very overwhelming. Um, or you might choose a self-directed approach and just use daily life as your curriculum. Maybe you don't want to follow a, a workbook or a curriculum plan. Maybe you're just going to unschool and see what comes up in daily life. You know, I, I educated five kids that way and they're all mostly university graduates. <laughs> Most parents can teach up to grade eight without teacher's manuals. You can do this, right? After grade eight, that's where my math ends and I had four kids go into STEM careers. Then you know what? They can self-teach, you can hire tutors. They will get through high school math if you keep on going for sure. Okay, um, there's lots of online courses out there that um, whatever, whatever <laughs> your, your child wants to do. Um, there's lots of stores that have hands-on materials, things like this. This was, um, this is what you want to buy at curriculum sales because they're really expensive at stores. But these are um, 
volume um, shapes and the nets. And this really helped my child in grade eight figure out um, math. So it was very hands-on for, for them. Okay, you can use lots of toys and visuals and activities and anything in real life to teach. You, you can be pretty creative <laughs> and do this. Okay, I'm just whipping through this. And then for social and science, lots of field trips, really good stuff. Games, kids love learning through games. You don't have to fight with them. Just <laughs> pull out a game. <laughs> I um now some people set up a schoolroom, a dedicated schoolroom. If you want to do that, sure. I just turn my house into a immersive learning experience. So this is my kids' bathroom, right? There's a toilet. I had um posters over there. So when they're brushing their teeth, you know, they want to look at something, they have posters to look at. And every month I change out the posters, they're laminated. Um, I still do that actually. And my kids are now in their twenties, <laughs> but um, you know, there's lots of ways to, this is our hallway. We had a whole bunch of maps there. We had a number line here. Um, the, these things have been up so long. I think my kids no longer look at them, but anyways, um, you can, you're going to have lots of time. Homeschooling takes about an hour, two hours a day. So kids will have lots of free time. I would suggest you do not get in the habit of thinking you have to fill their time or entertain them. Absolutely not. Um, kids will find something to do if you refuse to put yourself in the entertainer um, position, <laughs> right? That's not your job. You're not a school. Um, your kids may be bored at some times, but they also will find things to do, especially if you give them some chores. Don't worry. So they'll have lots of times to pursue their interests, and do things outside the home. We had a, a Minecraft club. Um, it was a good way to for the kids to meet other kids and socialize. Every Friday afternoon, all the kids came to our house. Parents dropped them off. It worked for so many years. They loved it. Other things, as soon as kids are age 12, they can go volunteer at the food bank. There's lots of ways to get kids and teenagers together, socializing and, you know, maybe learning things or two. Projects and jobs are really good too. Okay, last thing, assessment. So here's an example of a spring report. So when your facilitator comes out in the spring, they're gonna put down what program you followed. Did you follow the Alberta programs of study or the solo outcomes? Um, your child will have a student number, date of visit, and then you say what you use to assess things or they'll ask you, and these are things like observation, right? Descriptive reports by parent. So they'll just talk to your child and this will be no more than one page, right? And they'll just write down what your child's been doing. So for example, in math, um, John plays construction games, RoboCraft and Roblox where people build games together in computer projects. John is learning to code through Code Academy John learns math formulas when encountering real life problems, such as helping with his parents' renovation project. That's it. They're not going to record any exams in math, marks, things like that. Not at all. Um, in science, John engages in a variety of activities, field trips to the zoo, science center, mad science camps, museums, where he learned about geodes and other minerals. I remember my son excitedly telling the facilitator about the rocks and the rock cycle he learned about, right? So she writes that down. So very, very easy. And then at the bottom, um, the facilitator signs off and says, in my opinion, in my expert opinion, <laughs> um, this child is, is good to go for the next grade or the next year, right? Um, so this is, a, this is a really good document. This is another reason you wanna go with a homeschooling board is because you're going to have naysayers and your relatives and you can say, oh, well, you know, this teacher, we have a facilitator and she signed off that he's learning everything he needs to learn for, for his age. So um, you have this certificate. Um, this is very good for naysayer partners if they don't really agree with homeschooling. It shows your child is learning. Maybe not the government curriculum, but they're still learning lots of things. 
okay. High schools have sometimes, been sometimes sometimes they even pass in court as proof that you're educating your child in uh, custody cases. Sometimes right. I've seen it. Yes. Yes, because it is a legal document. I mean that that facilitator signs off and says, "Yeah, in their professional opinion, learning's happening." Right. So that's really yeah. good. Okay. Um, I was talking about how much time does home education take. Um, now this varies, right? If you have a child who dawdles, <laughs> or you're having a bad day, and they're just not doing that worksheet, it's going to take a bit longer. <laughs> Um, we didn't have that problem because we unschooled, but um, my my high school kids didn't do any more than two to three hours a day. And that was for two cores and two options. So um, elementary can take way less, 10 to 30 minutes, junior high, about an hour a day. Now we're talking home education, right? We're not talking about school or distance education because distance education they figure they got to keep those kids busy five hours online and on a full school day. It's it's totally different. Home education is concentrated. And I like to use the analogy of a dinner party. OK, when you're giving a dinner party for 20 people, it takes a lot of time, right? You're going to plan, you're going to shop, you're going to cook, you're going to clean. Then you're actually going to have the dinner party and then you got to clean up takes so much time or compared to you you make a sandwich and you and your child sits down and has a sandwich for dinner right <laughs> it's way way faster <laughs> so if you're a teacher planning for 30 kids in a classroom everything takes longer so much longer than if you're a teacher and one child or even a teacher and three kids so much faster okay so Kids have a lot of free time and that's good. They get to pursue their interests. They, some days they just fight with each other, but it does, <laughs> takes a lot of, you know, they, it leaves a lot of time for interests and what they really, really want to do. Um, a lot of homeschoolers never finish the curriculum in the year. You know, we're human. We get distracted. We, you know, we have company come. We may get sick, may go through a divorce or a move. We don't finish. That's okay. Just start the new year, new curriculum, new grade. Kids keep on learning. They they don't lose anything. Be sure to join a support group. There are so many Facebook groups per city and town in Alberta. Um, if you live somewhere, um, just Google Facebook and the city, town's name, you will find your local support group. We seem to be all on Facebook, primarily. What about socialization? You're going to get asked this a lot because people think, oh, kids find friends in school. Well, no, they find friends everywhere. <laughs> Anywhere. There's lots. And it's a much more diverse um, group of friends. It's all ages, genders, abilities, cultures, religions. So they will find friends. Okay. Um, there's different ways to get organized. Like I said before, you can have a dedicated schoolroom. Or you could be like us and just, you know, use our whole house as our schoolroom. We live there. It's our yard, our workshop, our garage, everywhere is learning. So there's lots of tips and tricks on online that people can, can help you with. Okay. If you have a child with special needs, um, there's no extra funding in home education. Um, ASCA is an organization that provides supports for the child and the parent. So if you go to the ASCA website, look at their home education page, they will list what they provide. And if not, you can also go to Alberta Health Services directly for support. Um, I had a child with special needs and he, he got coded in grade two, grade five, and then we let it go until right before diploma exams and university because university needs one to be within three years. So um, we did it then. So he had accommodations for diploma exams and he had accommodations and lots of extra funding that went just to him for university. Okay, so I'm gonna end my blurb here and answer more questions. So I know it's, it's overwhelming, it is scary. <laughs> it's like stepping off a cliff into the unknown. But remember, it's, you know what, you're only doing this for a year. Um, do it for a year. 
if, if you mess up this year, and I guarantee you will not mess up, nobody will ever mess up their kids. Um, you can put them in school next year if you want, right? If you want, but you won't mess up. There's lots of peer support out there, homeschooling board support, and nobody ever can stop kids from learning. None. You are a veteran homeschooler now, so you can do this. You got it. Okay, anybody more questions? Gold, are you going to help me with questions? Yep, I I have been already, actually. Oh, oh, on the chat box. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, where did I leave off? It was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so is there any, so yeah. One of the questions that just came in is, so the boards will tell the possible outcomes your sh kids should know for a certain age and a good facilitator should know that. That's mm -hmm. true, yeah. Yes, that's true. Um, let's see. But they won't necessarily tell you unless you ask them. Right. <laughs> because they should not shame you if you're not, you know, just having a good relationship is more important than, you know, because all, all kids, even in school, I should, I should, I, I always like to say this, even kids in school are at all different levels in every classroom. There is no such thing as one standard that every kid is being held to, even in a school setting. And I say that as a former high school teacher and a former principal as I've done both of those jobs and no kid is at the same level. So there might be kind of an idea of where they should be at, but all kids are at their own levels at all times. Right. Okay. Um, a lot of parents do work outside the home and home educate. I know I did. Um, yeah. It was a little hard to find childcare. I was in a babysitting co-op and from the ages of my child from six to age 10 when I could actually leave them home alone it was really tough because they would go to a babysitter's and watch tv I mean there there were no other kids to play with or <laughs> it's really hard to find those daytime sitters but um um if you can trade off with another home educator or you know hire a homeschooling team to babysit during the day that really works too so a lot of parents do work from home and home educate absolutely um yeah that's right what kinds of things are the board looking at when they come for the two visits um just any evidence of learning they just you know learning is great wherever it happens To provide all the resources activities and projects do you find it can easily get more costly than sending to public school um, you can find a lot of resources around the house. And like I said, with the internet and the libraries, there's a lot of resources there too. Um, I mean, kids from ages six to 12, um, you probably have lots around your house right now. You have a kitchen. If you get in there and bake or cook with your kids, they're going to learn math. If you take them to the grocery store, they're going to learn math. Um, there's lots of ways to use everything in your daily life and to teach educational outcomes. Absolutely. You can go to the library now. It's free in Calgary. I'm not too sure if it is free in other cities around the province, but, you know, you can get any book you want from the libraries. And there's there's lots, lots of resources out there. Okay. Um, go to, did I miss any more questions? Yeah. I'm just looking through them. There's a lot more. Okay. Uh, so if your son turns five next year in August, you can apply for home education for kindergarten in September. For grades 10 to 12, do you have to follow a certain curriculum? Or can the 1,400 outcomes come from a home-based education for credits and a government diploma? That's that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 
you have to. So again, you want to make sure the curriculum you choose, you don't have to choose what, what textbooks they use in high school. But if you're choosing a curriculum, and some parents choose a faith-based curriculum or something that is really, really good, you got to make sure it meets the outcomes for those grade 10 to 12 courses. So high school is more course-based. Um, grades 1 to 9 is grade-based, right? So in high school, you're no longer doing grades, technically. You're doing courses. Well, you're not. Your child is. So for like English 10, um, there are specific outcomes a child has to do, and there are parameters in what you choose to meet those outcomes. So you would discuss that with your homeschooling board. Not every homeschooling board supports credits on high school home education. So you have to pick a board that will support you in this and help you with this. Okay, if your child wants credits and a government diploma, pick a board that will help you with this. And there's about 10 to 12 of them. We have a tab on our website called High School. Go there for the list of boards. And they will assign you a facilitator that is very well-versed in high school and will help your child meet those outcomes. Okay. So, and but the beauty of that is you can really personalize it. Um, I had I had boys, four boys that didn't like Shakespeare. They hated Shakespeare. And they actually got through all their English courses without much Shakespeare. I had a daughter who loved Shakespeare. And she overdosed on Shakespeare. So you can really make it more personal for high school. Okay, outcomes for each grade listed on the website. No, 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 no. 1,400 outcomes per grade. No. Um, <laughs> um, they've pared it down in the new curriculum for elementary, I noticed, but you would have to go to Alberta Education. Um, so if you go to Alberta Ed, curriculum outcomes per grade, they will tell you what they are. Or you can ask chat GPT. Um, the other day I said, uh, what are the topics in Alberta Education Bio 30? on chat GPT and I got all the topics. It was pretty cool. How do homeschool children fare in university? I worry about setting my child up for failure, um, not having formal testing and big class sizes then getting into university and it's a big shock. Well, I'm gonna just talk anecdotally because there's not any research studies on this, but um, among my five children who went to university and all their friends, they love it. It's a lot more respectful to them. They can go to the bathroom without putting their hand up. <laughs> they can eat in class. Um, they And university is an adjustment for every child, whether they're home educated or not. But homeschool children have actually less adjustment problems in university because if they've done a home ed high school program, they're much more self-directed and they know deadlines. They know how to plan out work. They know what they need to do by what, what time. They're very well set up for, for university, which is way more emphasis and responsibility on the learner. Okay. Now, to be fair, I would have to say um, the first year in university, I did help my kids handle all the admin work. So we homeschooling parents tend to do all the admin with our facilitator and we forget that we need to hand over a lot of those skills to our kids as they do in, in school. In grade seven, kids start taking on responsibility for picking their courses and registering for high school courses and things like that, where we homeschoolers just keep doing it for our kids. So <laughs> I would I would say that's you in high school you want to hand over more of that admin work to your child in homeschooling but as far as academics they do fantastic um, they're very well suited to that university climate um, music lessons count for funding absolutely your funding will go by very fast you will discover like nine hundred dollars can be gone in three months of music lessons <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you, Golda. You put in the the link for where to find the learning outcomes. 
Yeah, and just just so like there is a link in the chat box of the learning outcomes for the Alberta program of studies, and it's not the all the 1400 just like the the snapshot uh, for parents with kids in school. Um, you're not required to teach that, though. It's just that if you want to kind of keep up with what they would be doing in school, you can you can do that. But you'll find that the Alberta curriculum can be quite piecemeal. That means they learn the same thing, say, in science over and over again in, in various grades, just at different levels. And you don't have to do it like that. There's lots of choices when you're homeschooling that don't include teaching the Alberta program of studies. <laughs> but if you want to look at what they're learning in school, that's where you would find it. Excellent. Um, are there boards that include learning a second language? Um, no, like I said, the boards, the homeschooling boards do not teach your child. You provide the resources for your child or or the teachers or you can teach, you can get tutors, you can outsource to classes. Um, so if you're if you're pulling your child out of French immersion, um, you have to find the French resources that you're going to teach him with under home education. Yeah. Oh yeah, all boards allow second languages, but they do not often have the resources to to teach it. Yeah. Okay. Um, your child needs to be present in Alberta on September twenty eighth, which is count day every year, to to be counted as a home educator. Okay. I think I answered questions. Anybody else, any other questions? If you want, you can unmute if you have a specific question, but it seems like this is good. We've been asked a few times if the present, where's the presentation gonna be available, Judy? So we've had that question a few times now. Um, We will put it, uh, okay, good plan. It's going to be, I put, I, I said it was going to be on our website and on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. So it's, we have a website and it's under webinar help right here. <laughs> and it's going to be titled 2024, 2025. Okay. So should be here. I'll put it right at the top so people can, can find it easy. And we host it at YouTube. So yeah, it'll be up there. Okay. All right. Last chance for questions, everybody. I'm so sorry for the um, the late start, um, but things happen. Technology today was not very good. <laughs> Where am I? I'm coming back here. Okay. Here are some of the benefits of home education. If you have a child, like a teenager who likes to sleep in, that's really, really, really good one. Um, Lots of time for interest, close siblings, and the focus is on the family, not peers. They learn great work habits, good social skills, love of learning, and a one-on-one -on -one education, right? And I, I've noticed that with my family, like my siblings are still very close, even though they live in different countries, different cities. Um, if you're interested in the book, Unschooling to University, it is free. But it's a thick one, so um, Canada Post charges $18.99 plus tax to send it. So if you could e-transfer me $20 to my email address, I can mail it out to you across Canada. Yeah, absolutely. If you have any questions that you didn't want to share in the webinar, feel free to email Golda or myself at, at this email address and we can answer all your questions there for sure. Okay, and I think, um, are we good for questions then? Oh, the name of the book is Unschooling to University. Oh, good, I'm glad that was helpful. I, yeah, and you can find different curriculums at Education Station, The Learning House, many more places. Oh yes, on our website, we have a list yeah popular curriculums, um, but you don't have to choose those. There's, you know, ask on the Facebook groups. There's lots of P2 
people. But keep in mind, if it works for somebody else's kids, it might not work for yours. <laughs> and it's not your child's fault. It's uh, just not a good fit. So um, you might want to switch halfway through. That's why people sell all their used curriculum at used curriculum sales because maybe it didn't work for their child, but they found something else that did work. So just be aware that um, there's so much out there. There's no one best program. It's what's a good fit. Golden and curriculum is not necessary. You don't have to teach through curriculum. That's just one choice. Right. Yeah, yeah. we didn't until high school, so. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming and thank you, Golda, for <laughs> co-hosting with me. Um, I, I, I could have, I could have taken over if you really couldn't have got your microphone. I had, I had, I had it ready to go <laughs> just in case. Well, I, I don't know. I had my, I borrowed the kids' webcam and that has a built-in microphone. So it worked this morning when I tried it out and then something didn't work tonight. So I'm going to have to rethink that one. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, frustrating. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Okay. Well, good. Thank you everybody. I'm going to stop.